So I just pulled up here at the house and that's one big dog, I tell you. We're gonna find out if he's friendly. There's the windmill right there. Look how big that thing is. It's gigantic. There's the well. That tower is. It's still got the mechanism up there, which is kind of impressive. But I'm gonna say that's 60 feet tall at least. There's 20, there's 40, there's 60, maybe 75 feet. I don't know. Pretty big. Okay. Well, since I've been here before, we're not going to treat this any different than any other job. We're going to start at the tank and work our way out to the well. The only thing we need is our multimeter. So we're going to go down here into the basement. Hopefully we don't find no critters. And there's our tank. So we got our meter set on AC. We're going to check all four points of the switch. And apparently he has it off. Let's go inside and turn the breaker on. Oh, wow. Last time I was here, none of this was finished. That's nice. Got the floor done. Got the room done. Like, all this was open wall. Okay. Well, there's only one new breaker in the entirety of this thing. Well, actually, there's two. This one looks like it's tripped. It is tripped. But I feel like this was my breaker, but that one's on. So... Let's see. Oh, instant trip. Okay. Typically, if a breaker trips instantly like that, that is a bad pump. So what we're going to do to test it is we're going to go disconnect the wires out at the wellhead and basically separate them to where they're not hooked up. And then we're going to come back in here and turn it on. If it doesn't trip then, then it lets you know that the problem is down in the well. Once you disconnect the wires from the wellhead and you turn it back on, if it trips still and it's not hooked up, that means the problem is either in the wiring here, the wiring in the ground, like under the house, or it could be the wiring from uh, like in the trench between the well and the house. So since it trips, there's no need to test anything at the tank. We're going to go ahead and remove this lid and test our wires here. So what we're going to do, we're going to untape our wire nuts here and then unspin them, separating the two, and then we'll test it. So while we have our wire nuts off, we already know that the breaker is off. But I've learned the hard way in the past, just because the breaker's off doesn't mean it's the right breaker. So we're going to go ahead and test it just to be safe. We don't have any power between the two. We'll test one over the ground. No, nope, no power there and no power there. The reason why you do uh, like hot to ground is because sometimes the ground can be energized from something else. And a lot of plumbers back in the like the 60s would get electrocuted because they would use the copper plumbing as a grounding bar. And if a plumber were to grab that and it were to be energized, he couldn't let go. I'm just going to untwist my wires here. So now that I have these wires right here, these come from the house. They go down in the ground, come from the house. But since I have a cat here, I don't want I don't want to get the cat to be curious and get electrocuted, so I'm going to bend them up like this. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, go turn the power back on, and then we'll come out here and we'll test these leads to make sure we get 240 volts, and also to make sure that the breaker doesn't trip itself. Because if the breaker trips itself now with it disconnected, that means this wire between the well and the house is bad. Off. Back on. Ooh, no, that's not good. Bummer. Okay. That means we've got a culprit somewhere else. Let's start looking. Let's start. 
Back to the basement we go. Absolutely no reason why that should be tripping. All right, we look at the switch. Nothing crazy, nothing obvious. Make sure the switch isn't melted together. Okay, switch isn't melted together. Oh, man. Why, oh, why? Would it be doing that? Okay, so I'm following. We got yellow wire here, and that yellow wire runs all the way that direction. Now, I have seen crazy things in the past in houses like this. You can tell how old this place is, right? I mean, this is old cast iron drain pipe, and it's leaded together, so that can give you an idea about the age. Well, they knocked a hole through the block wall here, and the wires ran through there. So this is our wire right here. I have seen in the past where rodents get under the house, like a groundhog or a squirrel, and they've actually chewed through these wires, and they've killed themselves because they got, you know, they got to the, to the power and it electrocuted them. So it's not so uncommon to say that that could be something similar here with as many wild creatures as is running around as there is. Hey, Kit Kat. Okay, so we know that it's wire that looks just like that that we're looking for. If we come back in here, I don't see any of that here. And see, there's no Romex connector right there. There should be a Romex on that. But it's not showing any uh, any issue. Now, it totally could be a bad breaker, but I doubt it. But we'll, we'll test that theory in a little bit. What I need to do now, I need to get on the other side of this wall and, uh, and see what's up. Hey, buddies. Ain't no big dogs in here gonna bite me? Check you out. You're a pretty bird. Yeah, you're a pretty bird. Ah. You're a pretty bird too. Y'all are gorgeous. Okay. So this would be the back side. And we are in the electrical room at this point. And see, there's all sorts of things that could have happened here because this house is under major construction at this point. So, we have, see right, so this says 240 volt for the well. And then we can follow it down, and we can pull it up out of the hole a little bit. I don't see any mishaps here. So the next thing we have to do is we have to go and try to get underneath this portion of the floor to see if we find any bad spots in that wire. Can I get where you are? I know that's your spot, but like the wire, the yellow wire right there in front of the big 150 pound mastiff is most likely my wire. Can I come in there, buddy? Huh? Can I come in there? Thank you. Okay, back. See? You got a dog living under here, so there's all sorts of things that it could be. Let's see. I know that's my wire right there. It goes there, it goes over there. Actually, everything looks pretty pretty decent. Except for the fact that there's a 150 pound dog underneath this spot. Mm. Okay, so this is my wire. I don't feel any bad spots here. It goes up and over. It goes over there. And it goes up into the house. Let's see if we see any bad spots on this side. Mm, nothing. Damn, okay. All right, so we got one more check, one more test that we can do. Everything seems to be on the up and up in this room. That dude's just chilling. How are you feeling, bud? Okay. Finally out from underneath that house. Now, I've disconnected the, the wires out here at the well, okay? So, from the panel box to the tank, which are the switch, and then it comes out here. 
So all those are still in one circuit. The only thing I've taken out of the circuit as far as this point is the pump. So the next thing we're going to try, we're going to disconnect the wires from the switch. And we're only going to test the wire. Once we disconnect it from the switch, then that'll be testing the wire from the panel box to the switch. And that'll take the line and the ground out of the equation. So maybe the wire that goes between the house and the well is the problem. We know that the yellow wire here comes from the breaker panel. So then the gray wire here goes out to the well. So we're going to follow this wire, which is this one here, and we're going to disconnect it and pop it out of the screw. And then we're going to follow it to the black one. And we're going to disconnect it and take it out of the screw. Okay, so now these go to the well, and that's out of the equation. Now let's go back and turn the breaker on and see what it does. All right, let's try this again. Whoa, okay. So it didn't pop that time. The only thing I've done was I <clears throat> took the wire from the well down to here out of the equation. So that tells me the wire that goes from the basement out to the well under the ground is broken, shorted out in some kind of way. How do we fix that? Really simple. You just temporarily want to run a wire across the ground into the basement and then turn the system on. Later on in the future, you can come here and grub and hoe and bury it <clears throat> six, eight, ten inches in the ground, whatever he wants to do. But for today, to get <clears throat> all of his animals water, we're just going to run one across the ground because it's only about, I'd say, 40 feet, and then the system should go back to working right. Well, these geese are pretty loud, but so check out what they did here. This used to be a jet pump, and they have their two size, uh, their two pipes for the jet pump. The uh, that other line was used as a chase pipe. So hopefully, I can actually pull the wire through and pull my new one in. I'm gonna see if that'll work. All right, so this is my new temporary wire, and I just went ahead and just wired it up to the pressure switch. And then we're going to go out to the well and hook it up across the ground and then make sure that our temporary wire is what's going to fix the problem before we bury this. So I'm going to pull a little bit extra and then I'm going to cut it and wire it up and we'll see if it works. One. So we're about to turn the breaker on. <clears throat> the only thing we have changed was the wire that goes from the well down into the basement to the pressure switch. That is the only thing that has changed. We're going to take our amp meter, we're going to flip it over to amps. We're going to take one single individual wire. We'll use the white wire and we'll clamp it on there and we will see what it reads when I energize it. Cool. And the pump is pulling 4.3, which is really low in my opinion. Okay, so it's pulling 4.3. Now let's go in the basement and see if we're getting any water pressure. Now we're down here in the basement. And yes, we have pressure. Now the switch did not satisfy, but we're close to 60. So I'm going to say the pump is probably still trying to run. Hmm, let's see here. All right, let's cut this off, see if water's going somewhere. I'm going to say the well probably ran out of water. That makes the most amount of sense. The only reason I know that <clears throat> is because this well is only like 73 feet deep. And we couldn't get this pump very deep. It was originally designed for a single line sucker, 
<clears throat> that was powered by the windmill. So this three inch pump that's in this thing, it just doesn't like to go down a well that's probably like three and three quarters of an inch. And those old chunking machines, those cable machines, they didn't dig that straight of a hole. They just followed the path of least resistance. Okay, let's go back in. Cat's going crazy. Let's go back in here and see. Okay. I'm not I'm getting one one amp. That is weird. Let's turn it off. Back up. Typically low amp draw means the well is dry and the pump doesn't have to work hard because it's not pumping any load. So if it's not pumping any load, the amps would be low. That's so strange. My meter is acting screwed. I'm going to go get a different meter. Okay, so things were getting a little screwy and I couldn't figure it out. So I came down here and I actually saw another problem. The pressure switch... The contact is burned. Let's see if I can get into it. It's right there, smack dab in the middle of the screen. That contact is burned. See it? See how burnt it is? Okay, so probably the wire is shorted in the ground and it caused all that surge to melt that contactor. This switch is going to get replaced regardless and the wire. You can see just how burned that contact is. That thing is fried. And the other one on the other side is looking pretty close to it. Now if you hop over here to the other side, those actually look pretty clean and pretty good to be two years old. But this side, yeah, that's pretty serious. So we're going to go ahead and put a new switch on it and see if that doesn't help solve the situation. Now you might think that the switch was the problem the whole time. It wasn't. Because it was popping the breaker. You can look at the switch and only one side of the contacts were burned. So, it w a switch isn't going to pop the breaker. It's got to be a direct short to ground. And the switch can't do that. It can only be the wire or the pump that can be a direct short to ground. Okay, so I am going to chase the new wire in. And I'm going to use the old wire as a snake. Unfortunately, I don't have anybody here working with me today, so i got to do this all by myself. To give you an idea of what I'm doing, you can see the wire going in the pipe there, and you follow it up here, and I've made it as straight as possible in that direction, and I'm going to go in the basement, and I'm going to pull it. I don't have much room to work over here. I'm not sure if I can pull it from this direction. Ugh, working alone sucks sometimes. If you're watching... Keep your basements clean. Oh, oh, I found the bad spot. Ugh. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop right there just to show you. I can smell it on my hand. It's just proof that it was not just the pressure switch. I know you're trying to, you know, in your head, you're like, oh, the pressure switch wasn't giving you power. So, but no, that wasn't the issue. You have to test things correctly. So let me turn the light on. Okay. Boom. As I was pulling it out on camera, you can see it. Voila. So there's all the troubles right there. It melted that wire inside that pipe. That is horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Okay, so we're going to change the game here a little bit because I don't think I'm going to be able to pull this wire through. It's being such a pain in the ass. If you can see, I'm pulling that wire pretty much out of next to nothing. There's a little bit right here. And there could be a lip right here, but I pulled out like three feet of wire before that was it. So there's something inside that pipe. Look how it just broke and crumbled. Yeah. Look at that. That was the issue the whole time. Okie dokie. 
I'm gonna have to uh, rethink this process. Okay, now, this is, this is pretty epic. <laughs> I came out here because I pretty much gave up on pulling it out of the conduit. So, you can see I started to drag it out of the well, right? So, I grab the wire like this and I start pulling and I have it in my hand and boom. Check this out. Follow the wire. There's another one. Another one. I mean, that is just crazy to me. Camera won't really focus on it. Put it on the ground. Look at that. That is just absolutely horrible. So, something's going on. I don't know if, uh, you know, the, the pipe that's in the ground has got slag inside of it or something that just, who knows. But typically, wire doesn't die like that. But, yeah. So, it's shit. I was just sitting here pulling it out. Okay. Well, that answers my question. I'm not even going to put the new one back through the same pipe because... If that happened, it's just going to happen again. Who knows why? Um, probably just sharp, sharp edges inside that metal pipe because that is copper. Um, so I'm just going to run one across the ground temporarily, and then later in the future, he can bury it by hand. So what I've decided to do is we're going to run the wire from the well over to here. I'm going to go a little bit above ground level. I'm going to hammer drill a hole through that, and that'll get me into the basement, and then I'm going to run conduit. And I'm going to bury it about a foot right here, and then I'll let him carry it along the rest of the way. Just that simple. We've got our little piece of conduit here. This will protect it from being above the ground a little bit. Feed that through. Feed this two into the basement. Give ourselves enough to work with. Put it in the hole. And then voila. There she goes. So this is going to leave him about an extra eight foot of wire that he's probably not going to need. But once he buries it, he'll have a little bit to play with. Okay, so since we've got that section done, we've got our little conduit sticking out of the wall there. It's protecting the wire going down into the ground. We'll go into the basement now. We'll change our pressure switch, and then we'll test the system to see if it fixes it. All right, now, before we change the switch, we have the system off, and we drained all the water pressure out of the system. So right now is a really good time to go ahead and check the air pressure in the tank. And all you need is a simple tire gauge. And you come here to the top of the tank. And you take the little valve off. And you check the air. So we have 36.3, which is good. Now, how you figure out how much air is supposed to be in your tank... As you look at your switch cover, and then in the upper corner, you see where it says on 40, off 60? So the lower number, which is 40, your air pressure needs to be within 5 PSI below that number. So it's close to 36 and a half, which is perfect. If this tank only had like 12 pounds of air pressure in it, then we would want to go ahead and take an air compressor and air it up to 35 to 36 PSI. Now, since we have the switch off, another good thing to inspect is the nipple. A lot of times that nipple there can get plugged up with sediment. So what you would do, you would just jam a screwdriver through that nipple to clean the obstruction, or you can just put a new one on. Stay away from galvanized nipples. I always recommend either brass or stainless steel. In this situation, the tank T is brass, so we're going to go ahead and use a brass nipple. If you need any uh, guidance on how to install a pressure switch or how to wire it, I have videos uh, specifically uh, on these pressure switches right here. So if you have any questions, go check out uh, those videos. Now that we have the new pressure switch installed, let's go turn the breaker on and do another electrical test on the system to make sure the pump is operating correctly. All right. Turn it on. Come down here and watch. 
pump is pulling 4.7 amps. We're going to sit here and watch it and wait until the pump kicks off. Should go from 4.7 and drop down to zero. The amp draw is slowly climbing as the pressure increases and there it drops. It dropped to zero. Perfect. All right. I'm going to go back into the basement, make sure the system is pressurized. I see 60 PSI. All right. Everything's good to go. We can turn the breaker back on or turn that back on. The water valve. Sounds good to me. I'm going to go ahead and change that filter for him since it looks so bad. All right, so now that I have basically fixed it and everything's back to working right, let's discuss and take a look at what we found. So these are two sections that had completely melted. So if we can look at this, I'm not sure if I can get really good. Here we go. So that's one. This was the other end of it. And then this section actually happened within about five feet of the house and the other one happened about 10 feet from the well so they were two totally separate incidences if it was one section then i would be like okay but it was two so it makes me really scratch my head as to why and then we come over here and we look at the switch and we get burn contacts on one side but not bad on the other the way that i see it is there was either an imperfection in the wire, which it's American-made wire, but American-made products really aren't hitting on much anymore these days, and it's just sad. But it could have been an imperfection in the wire, but it would have to be two areas that were have imperfections. Um, the wire could have been submerged in water since the pipe is under the ground and it lives its entire life in the water. Well... Wire does the same thing in a well, and it doesn't do that. So it's it could have been an imperfection in the wire, or what I believe is one leg has a problem. When that one leg had a problem, that's what melted the pressure switch on one side. That's what caused the burn. And then it put all that power through the other side, which makes one side have a higher resistance than the other, so that means one side has a whole lot more load than the other. Well, then it heats the wire up and the wire melts. Well, then it moves on down the line and it's doing the same thing in two separate areas because, like, the resistance in one is so high, so then the other line is feeding so much more current that it melts it. Now, that's just my theory. I don't really know, but this is what we got. So now we've got it fixed. The customer should be happy. He's at work. I'm at work. What do you do? Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around with me through this service call. This is really tough, a uh, tough head scratcher. I know uh, I've had a few people in the past ask me about wiring, and I can't make videos until I run across a situation to do so about. And then I can go ahead and, and give you a follow-along guide. So uh, if this helped you at all, please give the video a thumbs up. If you enjoy the content, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I don't know where YouTube's going, but I love it. I love everybody who watches my videos. There's about 1,500 of y'all that are watching them like pretty much dedicated, and I appreciate that more than y'all realize. So, so stay tuned for more content coming in the future, and thank y'all for watching. Have a good one.